My name is Violet, and I got married last year. I am now five months pregnant. My husband Samuel works for a trading company, and he was assigned to work in China for six months before I entered a stable period of pregnancy. Going overseas and returning to states with a newborn baby would be too risky, so I stayed. My husband, my parents, and my father-in-law all agreed. However, my mother-in-law did not approve of me staying. She deeply adores her son, and she strongly criticized me for not supporting my husband's overseas life. According to her, it is unacceptable for a wife to leave her husband's side for any reason. I wish we could have become estranged, but she still bothers me with gifts and treats. However, these treats are also a problem. The food my mother-in-law brings lacks consideration. First of all, there are raw foods such as oysters, mackerel, and tuna seafood. Maybe my mother-in-law thinks that raw food means fresh and luxurious. However, I'm pregnant, and I want to avoid raw foods. She even brought liver several times, saying that it would increase my blood. It is not good for the baby to have too much vitamin A. She also brought jalapeno pickles many times because she thought I like spicy food. I appreciate it, but I need to avoid spicy food during pregnancy. Therefore, I gave everything to my friends. She even gave me ground cherry tea and herbal tea, which I wasn't even fond of. I appreciate her kindness, but I wish she would study a little more. While enduring the nuisance of my mother-in-law's treats, I finally reached my due date. The baby's gender is a girl. I talk to my husband almost every day using Zoom. And he is already showing his parental love from China. My child is definitely the cutest in the world. What should I do if she said I want to marry my dad? <laughs> You're getting ahead of yourself, honey. When I showed him my belly on the screen, my husband's eyes sparkled. I haven't told my husband about my mother-in-law's meddling. He's working hard all alone in a distant foreign land. So it must be tough for him every day. It's cruel to burden him with any complaints. Daddy wants to meet you soon. I say while rubbing my belly. Yes, I want to meet you too, sweetheart. When my husband said, "Oh, my water broke." What? A splash is heard, as a paddle of water forms on the floor. Call an ambulance. No. Maybe a taxi is okay. Don't worry, honey. I'm hanging up now. After that, things moved quickly. I called a reserved maternity taxi and went straight to the OBGYN department. I began having contractions suddenly and panicked while calling both my family and my in-laws. By the time we arrived at the hospital. The pain was intense. I struggled alone for hours before finally giving birth to our child. When our baby was born, her face was red and so cute that tears streamed down my face. One month after our daughter's birth, my husband returned home. My in-laws went to the airport to pick him up, and he came running into our home with lots of souvenirs. Happy to be back after six long months away. I'm home. Where's Mona? Mona is our daughter's name. Without even looking at me, my husband rushed to her crib and said, "Mona, it's Daddy." Oh, you're like an angel. My husband, who knew nothing about my postpartum condition, said it so carefully. I had been accumulating fatigue every day since giving birth. What's with that outfit, Violet? When your husband is coming home? As soon as she saw my clothes, my mother-in-law commented, 
my loungewear was indeed a little dirty. Oh, Mona just spit up milk. I was about to change clothes now. Can't you even feed her properly? What? She's a baby, so it's normal for her to spit up milk. I wanted to retort, but I held back and apologized instead. I was already exhausted from taking care of myself and the baby alone for a month, and my husband hadn't even called or given me time to change clothes since he came home. By the time I changed and came back, my father-in-law had already left. He had gone to pick up my husband during his work break and had probably gone back to work. However, my mother-in-law was still there. Aren't you tired, Samuel? Why don't you take a little break? No, I'm fine. Hey, Mona. Mona, are you sleepy? My husband casually entertained his mother and quickly turned his attention back to his daughter. Then, the mother-in-law came closer to her son and started to speak to him again. She seemed to be trying to get his attention back to her. Samuel, how was the food in China? Oh, it was okay. Since you've been working hard, I will cook you a special meal today. What? I was surprised by my mother-in-law's sudden offer. Violet is tired from taking care of the baby. So she can't make a proper meal, can she? So, let me handle the cooking. I'll make chicken steak for you. Thank you, Mom. What? Thank you, Mom? I was planning to prepare a proper dinner on the first night of my hubby's return home. Violet, I'm going to use the kitchen. Okay. Oh! The baby bottle. It's left in the sink like this. I told you earlier that I fed the baby milk, didn't I? I hadn't even changed yet, you know? My mother-in-law occupied the kitchen and started cooking. She served my husband a perfectly round, beautiful chicken steak, but gave me a quite burnt one. Well, at least she gave me something. From then on, my mother-in-law came to our house every day. Always around the time my husband came home from work. She couldn't wait to see her beloved son again after half a year. However, my husband's attention was always on her daughter, which annoyed my mother-in-law. She would vent her frustration to me through complaining about my housekeeping or sulking because her son didn't pay attention to her. My husband, who was overjoyed to be back home with our daughter, was oblivious to the tension between me and his mother. I wished he would pay more attention to it. Come on, dear husband, please pay attention. Since my husband's way of dealing with his mother was too casual, she changed her tactics a little bit today. Hey, we still haven't celebrated Mona's birthday yet, right? So today, I bought some Wagyu beef as a celebration. Thank you, Mom. It's a celebration for you, Mona. See? Amidst my mother-in-law's desire to spend time with her son and my husband's desire to spend time with his daughter, I began preparing the table without paying much attention. Then, my mother-in-law spoke up. I bought some juice for Mona too. It's a special birthday juice. Here, 100% natural fruit juice with honey mixed in. Doesn't it seem good? Look Mona, here's some juice for you. Wait, wait a minute. I rushed back into the kitchen like Usain Bolt and took the juice box from my mother-in-law's hand. No, this is not okay. What are you doing? Hey, that's my line. Violet, give the juice back. My mother-in-law tugged on the juice box with force, causing the juice to spill out. I couldn't let my daughter drink that juice. So I pushed my mother-in-law's hand away and held onto the juice box. 
Mona is only one month old. It would be a problem if she drinks something like that. Something like that? I just thought it would make my son happy to have his daughter join us for a meal together. My mother-in-law covered her face and began to pretend to cry. Mom, calm down. That was a bit too much, wasn't it, Violet? My mother-in-law left the house with exaggerated gestures, like a stage actress. Although Samuel seemed to have been deceived by his mother, he couldn't chase after her because he was holding Mona in his arms. It must have been a blow for the mother-in-law that her son did not follow her. As for me, I was angry. I slammed the almost empty juice pack into the trash can. What are you doing, Violet? Mom went through the trouble of bringing us a gift for the celebration. What? Are you seriously saying that? I glared at my husband and took out the mother and child handbook from the diaper bag. I opened it and pushed it in front of my husband. Take a look at the contents. Huh? Is this? The section is about weaning. If you are a parent, you should study properly. Weaning is for babies from about five months old. At one month, it's still breast milk and formula. Oh, I see. It really says so. I pointed to the place on the page, and make sure to read this carefully too. Even after studying on solid foods, you can't give your baby things like mixed fruit juice with various fruits added. And honey shouldn't be used until they are one year old to prevent infant botulism. You know that, right? Honey is still like poison to a one-month-old baby like Mona. R really? Sorry, I didn't know. Samuel's face turned pale as he apologized. Ignorance is a sin. Or if you are happy that our daughter was born, then you should study these things carefully too. I handed the mother and child handbook to my husband. Make sure you read it all carefully. Okay, I will. I read it now. But my mom didn't know about this kind of thing. Um, it seems that the idea that honey is bad for babies hasn't been around for a long time. There's a possibility she didn't know, but she should know about the timing and methods for starting solid foods. At the very least, I think she knew to be careful about allergies when introducing new foods. You know, allergies. Samuel's voice became stiff. As he lowered his gaze and pondered something, yeah, what's wrong? Well, when I was in junior high, I had a girlfriend who was allergic to nuts. When she came over to my house, my mom gave us snacks, but they had nuts in them, and we had to call an ambulance. Oh no, could it be? Samuel's face stiffened. I'm probably thinking the same thing as my husband. Honey, while you were away, your mother gave me a lot of food and stuff, you know. But, huh? What do you mean? I showed my husband the pictures of the gifts from my mother-in-law. Actually, I recorded everything: fresh products like seafood and meat, and large amount of liver, spicy food, and some kind of herbal tea that I didn't understand. When my husband compared his mother's gifts with our maternity record book, he made a bitter face because none of them were recommended for pregnant women. My husband and I looked at each other in fear. This is too scary. Was your mother always like this? If that's really the case, we can't just ignore it. My husband and I have devised a plan. To discern my mother-in-law's intentions, while my husband wishes to believe that his mother is simply ignorant, I do not. I believe that her actions are deliberate. 
my instincts tell me that it is dangerous to allow my mother-in-law to get too close to her daughter. So I want to obtain evidence to distance her from us. I am currently taking refugee with our daughter in a certain location. Sorry, mom. Thank you for coming over. Sure, you can always rely on me, honey. But I can't believe that Violet took Mona and left. Yes, he told his mother that I left home with Mona to call her over to our house. His acting skill were impressive. As expected, my mother-in-law was ecstatic when her son asked for her help. For now, I'll make some tea. There's some tea that Violet left behind. I've never seen this before. I wonder what kind of tea it is. Oh, that's a tea that promotes uterine contractions. Uterine contractions? I was shocked by my mother-in-law's words, and I could tell from my husband's voice that he was surprised too. I gave it to Violet as a gift when I heard she was having a girl. My mother-in-law looked proud. What? But isn't that a kind of tea you shouldn't drink when you're pregnant? What if something happened? Even if something happened, would have been okay. Because it was a girl. If it were a boy, he would have been cute like you. But a girl wouldn't be cute like you. But... Violet didn't drink that tea, did she? Herbal tea has the same effect, you know? So, she gave birth to an ugly girl. It is not good to waste people's kindness like that. I was speechless at my mother-in-law's outrageous theory. Did she give me that tea to get rid of her granddaughter because she is a girl? I held my daughter in my arms. I will never forgive her for planning something like that. It is that so? Mom, you were thinking about a lot of things for us. Yes, that's right. You understand, don't you, Samuel? My husband's voice is trembling. He must be feeling disbelief about his mother's statement. However, he still needs to ask her something so he patiently speaks kindly to his mother. It's been a while since her son was kind, so she is getting carried away and talking more and more. I heard that you gave a lot of raw food and jalapeno pickles to Violet when she was pregnant. Yes, I gave her all of that. It was all for you, you know. I wanted you to have a cute baby boy instead of the girl in her belly. But it didn't work out. I'm sorry, honey. What about the time you tried to give juice to Mona the other day? Oh, well, you know, that child is trying to steal my son from me. I was going to give her a little punishment. Then, what about my middle school girlfriend? The nuts and the snucks? Oh, that girl. She's been using vulgar gestures towards you. Oh my god. That too? I was shocked by my mother-in-law's insane remarks, but I looked at the person sitting in front of me. My father-in-law is slumping and holding his head. Uh, are you okay? I'm sorry, Violet. I never thought my wife would do something like this. Actually, my daughter and I are in my father-in-law's car right now parked in a coin parking lot near our house. My husband asked for his father's cooperation in extracting information about his mother's misdeeds. Why did you do such a thing, mom? Why? Of course it was for your sake, honey. For my sake? Are you crazy? You almost killed my daughter. Your daughter? No. You are more important than anything else to me, Samuel. That's why I wanted to eliminate the bad things. What bad things? You are the worst thing of all. Mom, 
I can't do this anymore. It's just disgusting. Don't ever come near us again. Why? Why are you saying such terrible things? Who put you up to this? Tell me, who did this? Samuel! Don't touch me. S Samuel? Why? The conversation between the two was unbearable for the father in law, it seemed. When I heard what my son had to say, I couldn't believe that my wife had really been thinking such terrible things, but. After a while of silence, he lifted his head with determination. I'll go talk to them. Will you stay here with Mona? My father in law got out of the car alone and walked towards our house, where the mother in law and husband were waiting. His back looked like that of a warrior heading to the battlefield. I saluted him in my heart as I watched him go. Afterwards, my mother in law was fiercely criticized by her husband and son and broke down in tears. Being hated and treated as a lunatic by her beloved son seemed to be the worst thing for her. In the end, she was dragged away by my father in law and left. The troublesome thing was that the mother in law did not have a sense of wrongdoing. She sincerely believed that she was doing what was best for her son. Her love for her son had gone too far and had turned her into a monster. After that, the mother in law suffered from dementia, which seemed to be a severe shock from being pushed away by her beloved son. She now lives alone in a facility, and according to the father in law's reports, she looks old and frail. Our home was once filled with a dark atmosphere, but now some happy news has come our way. Violet, I got promoted. Really? Yeah, my rank has gone up, and my salary too. Congratulations, you work so hard every day. Actually, I have some good news too. Mona rolled over today. My husband's eyes sparkled as he looked at our daughter. Since then, he has been studying everything about child rearing, striving to acquire the correct knowledge and ethics. Now he is more knowledgeable about child rearing than I am. Thanks to him, I feel much more relaxed. From now on, the three of us will help each other and live without missing out on the small daily happinesses.